Now, I was here in this house doing a shower installation and the customer said this is the thing that every tradesman dreads. While you're here, So what we've got here, we've got chipboard floor. So uh, if you look on YouTube, there's actually a surprising number of videos which say, oh, the way you fix this, you drive a screw through the carpet, believe it or not, and then they kind of just fluff the carpet around and, and it's, oh, never ever do that. Do not ever drive a screw through the carpet because as an emergency plumber, I've been out to countless jobs where people have tried to fix a squeaky floorboard one way or another. And if you don't know what's underneath there, you don't want to be driving screws or nails in there. You really need to know what you're doing. So first thing is, don't go through the carpet, take the carpet up. It's not as horrendous as you might imagine because most carpet these days is on gripper rod. It's not stuck down or anything. So if you get a pair of pliers and just get it started, here we are. There you are, it wasn't so bad, was it? So if we pull it off, it's on the gripper rod. And we've got some underlay underneath, which unfortunately, a lot of the time is stapled down. Oh no, this is all right. It's a nice underlay. This is moisture resistant chipboard. It says should be glued. If they've used any glue in there, it's absolutely minimal. So what's happening is that as you're walking over, you can see the movement. And the movement is between that tongue and that groove on the chipboard. Now, obviously we, could do with just pulling the ball down but even if we pulled it down with a screw in there just to take that movement out you see the next one along we've got the same problem and all the way over now first thing is you've got to find out whether there's any pipes anything like that underneath hopefully being a modern house if there are pipes they should be going through the center of the joist. So these joists are around eight inches deep. I know that because I've been doing the shower room. So if we don't go any deeper than four inches, that's including going through the board, then in theory, we should be all right. So let's say three inches would be our maximum to screw down. If we keep on the joists all the way through, nobody's marked up any pipes. They haven't put a pencil mark across, so they avoid that. So I'm thinking there aren't any pipes and the reason I'm thinking there aren't any pipes and you really must think about all these things because as I say I've been at so many emergency call outs where people have just gone willy nilly straight through the pipe. So the reason I think there are no pipes here is because there's an eaves cupboard here and the pipes go out the back of the airing cupboard along the eaves cupboard and then they drop down into the, the bathrooms below. And the only other place that there may be pipes, if we look in here, we've got a shower. So those pipes are fed from somewhere and I would guess that if we took this piece up here, we would find it's marked saying there are pipes going through here. But even then, it may be the joists are running back front so that the pipes are going between the joists. So even that's not bad news. Now, happily over here, we don't have any squeaks. So all the squeaks are around this area here. So this being the worst of it. So what's happened is that the house was built, the timbers were probably got a bit wet, they swelled up, they put the boards down, they didn't bother gluing the boards, and they put a few screws, they put a few nails in actually, which is even worse because they will lift. So as the timbers shrunk, it's uh, created that gap. Now, if you're doing it properly, if you're doing it by the standards that they recommend, you put glue along the top of the joist, and then you glue all those sheets together and then you screw down. And if you do that, that's three ways you're stopping that squeaking. And I don't reckon they've done any of them. So I'm gonna have a go. I'm gonna put some screws in here. I'm gonna go very, very carefully with it. And what I'm also gonna do is get some PVA, which is very, very cheap PVA adhesive, water it down. That's very important. Don't try putting it in there neat because it'll go nowhere. What we need to do is we need to mix it maybe about three parts water to one part PVA, brush that into those joints, walk up and down on them so that we've worked PVA into the joints. That PVA will then swell the chipboard slightly and, and tighten the joint up. And then as it dries, as the PVA dries overnight, that will lock those joints in, in place. And it, it doesn't matter that they're wet because it's done the swelling and it's stuck there then. So 
I've done it many times before, it works, and, um, and hopefully it means that they're not gonna be suffering that creaky foot on the stairs at night. Oh, look at that, perfect. So I'm gonna work my way out towards the stairs so that I don't have to keep walking over it because it is a bit messy, but there's no point in cleaning up. Just let the, let the glue do the work. Now don't be tempted to use this glue too neat. You might think, oh, I'll use a stronger solution, it'll be better. It won't work because unless this gets down into the joints, it needs to be viscous. It needs to be able to free flow Otherwise, it'll never find its way through into those joints. So this is very, very cheap stuff to buy. You've got to pay about, say, 10 quid for a, some PVA. And um, you need a few screws and a brush. So what's it going to cost you? 15 pounds at the most, I should imagine. So when you get the PVA and you're brushing it into the joints, you can see it start to flow down into those joints, but just give it a little bit of encouragement by going on the balls and that will, the vibration and the movement will draw it down into the, into the joints. Anything you can do to try and get it to flow in, you can see it's going. If we fill those joints up with PVA, we've achieved most of what we're gonna do without even bothering about screws. But there are a couple of places, you can see these boards have been nailed down, which is another reason that they're not staying where they're put. But if we can just put a few screws in there, draw them down into place, stop some of that movement, it's gonna be silent nights. Once this is done, of course, the important thing is not to walk on it. Try and leave it for 12 hours if you can because obviously that glue needs to set. It'll probably set in about three or four hours, do most of its job, but to allow it to get to full strength, I think we'll leave it at 24 hours. If you can leave it 24 hours, if you can't, then just tread carefully. So much for that little squirty bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so while Jeff's busy there, just putting the rest of the glue into the joints, you just keep feeding that in until he's run out. I'm just gonna go along and fix the boards down. I don't like to fix them down too soon because if you're putting glue in, you need the boards to keep moving, flexing so that that glue works its way in. But once that's done, you can put some screws in. Now what I do, there's the nail. So if I go in beside the nail, pull them down using the nails as our guideline. I'm kind of tempted now to leave it at that. Jeff, the householder, the owner. I'm gonna leave him to pour, carry on putting the PVA into the joints until he gets fed up, which I think could probably be about half an hour. And if you're worried about taking up the carpet and getting it to go down, don't worry too much. Take up the carpet, do the job properly, and then get a carpet layer in. He will stretch it out, put the thing back. It'll probably cost you 30 quid or whatever, but you know, it'll go back, it'll look as good as new. And that's just one of the problems that we solved on Skill Builder. We've got lots more videos. If you've got problems with damp, you've got problems with leaking roofs, come and have a look at our channel. We're gonna keep trying to help you. And if you've got a problem, tell us about it, and we'll try to make a video or at least give you advice on how to solve it.